When Ishbosheth, Saul's son, heard that Abner had died at Hebron, his courage failed, and all Israel was dismayed. Now Saul's son had two men who were captains of raiding bands. The name of the one was Bana, and the name of the other Rechab, sons of Ramon, a man of Benjamin from Beeroth. For Beeroth also was reckoned to Benjamin. The Beerothites fled to Gitaim, and have been sojourners there to this day. Jonathan, the son of Saul, had a son who was crippled in his feet. He was five years old when the news about Saul and Jonathan came from Jerusalem. And his nurse took him up and fled. And as she fled in her haste, he fell and became lame. And his name was Mephibosheth. Now the sons of Ramon, the Berethite, Rechab and Bana, set out. And about the heat of the day, they came to the house of Ishbosheth, as he was taking his noonday rest. And behold, the doorkeeper of the house had been cleaning wheat, but she grew drowsy and slept. So Rechab and Bana, his brother, slipped in. When they came into the house, as he lay on his bed in his bedchamber, they struck him and slew him and beheaded him. They took his head and went by the way of the Arabah all night and brought the head of Ishbosheth to David at Hebron. And they said to the king, Here is the head of Ishbosheth, the, the son of Saul, your enemy, who sought your life. The Lord has avenged my lord the king this day on Saul and on his offspring. But David answered Rechab and Bana his brother, the sons of Ramon the Berethite. As the Lord lives, who has redeemed my life out of every adversity, when one told me, Behold, Saul is dead, and thought he was bringing good news, I seized him and slew him at Ziklag, which was the reward I gave him for his news. How much more, when wicked men have slain a righteous man in his own house upon his bed, shall I not now require his blood at your hand, and destroy you from the earth? And David commanded his young men, and they killed them, and cut off their hands and feet, and hanged them beside the pool at Hebron. But they took the head of Ishbosheth and buried it in the tomb of Abner at Hebron. Then all the tribes of Israel came to David at Hebron and said, Behold, we are your bone and flesh. In times past, when Saul was king over us, it was you that led out and brought in Israel. And the Lord said to you, You shall be shepherd of my people Israel, and you shall be prince over Israel. So all the elders of Israel came to the king at Hebron, and King David made a covenant with them at Hebron before the Lord, and they anointed David king over Israel. David was thirty years old when he began to reign, and he reigned forty years. At Hebron he reigned over Judah seven years and six months, and at Jerusalem he reigned over all Israel and Judah thirty-three years. And the king and his men went to Jerusalem against the Jebusites, the inhabitants of the land, who said to David, You will not come in here, but the blind and the lame will ward you off, thinking, David cannot come in here. Nevertheless, David took the stronghold of Zion, that is, the city of David. And David said on that day, Whoever would strike the Jebusites, let him get up the water shaft to attack the lame and the blind, who are hated by David's soul. Therefore it is said, The blind and the lame shall not come into the house. And David dwelt in the stronghold, and called it the city of David. And David built the city round about from the Milo inward. And David became greater and greater, for the Lord, the God of hosts, was with him. And Hiram, king of Tyre, sent messengers to David, and cedar trees, also carpenters and masons who built David a house. And David perceived that the Lord had established him king over Israel, and that he had exalted his kingdom for the sake of his people Israel. And David took more concubines and wives from Jerusalem, after he came from Hebron. And more sons and daughters were born to David. And these are the names of those who were born to him in Jerusalem. Shamua, Shobab, Nathan, Solomon, Ibhar, Elushua, Nepheg, Jephiah, Elishama, Eliada, and Eliphalet. When the Philistines heard that David had been anointed king over Israel, all the Philistines went up in search of David. But David heard of it and went down to the stronghold. Now the Philistines had come and spread out in the valley of Rephaim. And David inquired of the Lord, Shall I go up against the Philistines? Will you give them into my hand? And the Lord said to David, Go up, for I will certainly give the Philistines into your hand. And David came to Baal-perazim. And David defeated them there. And he said, 
The Lord has broken through my enemies before me, like a bursting flood. Therefore the name of that place is called Baal Perizim, and the Philistines left their idols there, and David and his men carried them away. And the Philistines came up yet again, and spread out in the valley of Rephaim. And when David inquired of the Lord, he said, You shall not go up, go around to the rear, and come upon them opposite the balsam trees. And when you hear the sound of marching in the tops of the balsam trees, then bestir yourself, for then the Lord has gone out before you to strike the army of the Philistines. And David did as the Lord commanded him, and struck the Philistines from Geba to Gezer. David again gathered all the chosen men of Israel, thirty thousand. And David arose and went with all the people who were with him from Bala Judah to bring up there the ark of God, which is called by the name of the Lord of hosts, who sits enthroned on the cherubim. And they carried the ark of God upon a new cart and brought it out of the house of Abinadab, which was on the hill. And Uzzah and Ahio, the sons of Abinadab, were driving the new cart with the ark of God. And Ahio went before the ark. And David and all the house of Israel were making merry before the Lord with all their might, with songs and lyres and harps and tambourines and castanets and cymbals. And when they came to the threshing floor of Nacon, Uzzah put out his hand to the ark of God and took hold of it, for the oxen stumbled. And the anger of the Lord was kindled against Uzzah, and God struck him there because he put forth his hand to the ark, and he died there beside the ark of God. And David was angry because the Lord had broken forth upon Uzzah, and that place is called Perez Uzzah to this day. And David was afraid of the Lord that day, and he said, How can the ark of the Lord come to me? So David was not willing to take the ark of the Lord into the city of David, but David took it aside to the house of Obinadom, the Gittite. And the ark of the Lord remained in the house of Obinadom, the Gittite, three months, and the Lord blessed Obinadom and all his household. And it was told King David, The Lord has blessed the household of Obinadom and all that belongs to him because of the ark of God. So David went and brought up the ark of God from the house of Obinadom to the city of David with rejoicing. And when those who bore the ark of the Lord had gone six paces, he sacrificed an ox and a fatling. And David danced before the Lord with all his might. And David was belted with a linen ephod. So David and all the house of Israel brought up the ark of the Lord with shouting and with the sound of the horn. As the ark of the Lord came into the city of David, Michal, the daughter of Saul, looked out of the window and saw King David leaping and dancing before the Lord. And she despised him in her heart. And they brought in the ark of the Lord and set it in its place, inside the tent which David had pitched for it. And David offered burnt offerings and peace offerings before the Lord. And when David had finished offering the burnt offerings and the peace offerings, he blessed the people in the name of the Lord of hosts, and distributed among all the people the whole multitude of Israel, both men and women, to each a cake of bread, a portion of meat, and a cake of raisins. Then all the people departed, each to his house. And then David returned to bless his household. But Michal, the daughter of Saul, came out to meet David and said, How the king of Israel honored himself today, uncovering himself today, before the eyes of his servants' maids, as one of the vulgar fellows shamelessly uncovers himself. And David said to Michal, it was before the Lord who chose me above your father and above all his house to appoint me as prince over Israel, the people of the Lord, and I will make merry before the Lord. I will make myself yet more contemptible than this, and I will be abased in your eyes. But by the maids of whom you have spoken, by them I shall be held in honor. And Michal, the daughter of Saul, had no child to the day of her death. A Song, A Psalm of David my heart is steadfast, O God, my heart is steadfast. I will sing and make melody. Awake, my soul. Awake, O harp and lyre. I will awake the dawn. I will give thanks to you, O Lord, among the peoples. I will sing praises to you among the nations. For your steadfast love is great above the heavens. Your faithfulness reaches to the clouds. Be exalted, O God, above the heavens. Let your glory be over all the earth, that your beloved may be delivered. Give help by your right hand and answer me. God has promised in his sanctuary. With exultation I will divide up the Shechem and portion out the veil of Succoth. Gilead is mine, Manasseh is mine, Ephraim is my helmet. 
Judah my scepter, Moab is my wash basin. Upon Edom I cast my shoe, over Philistia I shout in triumph. Who will bring me to the fortified city? Who will lead me to Edom? Have you not rejected us, O God? You do not go forth, O God, with our armies. O grant us help against the foe, for vain is the help of man. With God we shall do valiantly. It is he who will tread down our foes. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. There was a man sent from God, whose name was John. He came for testimony, to bear witness to the light, that all might believe through him. He was not the light, but came to bear witness to the light. The true light that enlightens every man was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made through him, yet the world knew him not. He came to his own home, and his own people received him not. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God, who were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us, full of grace and truth. We have beheld his glory, glory as of the only begotten Son from the Father. John bore witness to him and cried, This was he of whom I said, He who comes after me ranks before me, for he was before me. And from his fullness have we all received grace upon grace. For the law was given through Moses. Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God, the only begotten Son, who is in the bosom of the Father, he has made him known. Our cares, circumstances, troubles, and worries can cloud our vision of God. We forget the wonder, amazement, and awe that our God and his self-revelation should inspire. David here sets the example for enthusiastic wonder and worship. David and all the house of Israel were making merry before the Lord with all their might, with songs and lyres and harps and tambourines and castanets and cymbals. He brings the ark of God to Jerusalem, inside the tent which David had pitched for it. In fact, he dances before the Lord with such enthusiasm that his wife is embarrassed, but rather than yield to her concerns for social standing, he insists, I will make myself yet more contemptible than this. While our worship takes a different form than David's, his wholehearted praise should inspire us. For we do not have a tent merely pitched by humans, but the word who became flesh and dwelt among us. The underlying Greek word for dwelt means to spread a tent. David pitched a tent for the Lord, but now Jesus has come and pitched his own tent in our midst by becoming one of us. How can you follow David's example and worship the Lord with greater wonder and awe?